All right, come on, church. Here we go. Some days I climb the mountains. Some days I touch the clouds. Some days my best friend has been the cold, hard ground. There's mercy new each morning. Comfort through the night. My eyes are fixed on Jesus, and I'm going to be I've got that hallelujah feeling that I won't my soul, soul down got in. that hallelujah feeling that I won't let go. I've been born again, yes and amen. No matter what comes, I know I've got that hallelujah feeling down in my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, just because it's raining. Doesn't mean the sun won't shine. There's a season for the struggle and a season for the prize. But my hope is never fading, cause it's anchored in the truth. My father goes before me and his joy will see me. Come on, church. Thank you, witness. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Foothills United Methodist Church as we gather together on this day that God has given us to worship and what a worship we have for you. We have it all. If you like baptism, we have that. If we have communion, you've got that. Prayers, songs, and most importantly, confirming five of our youth as new members of the church. And we have lots of friends gathered with us today, so let's take a few moments to stand and greet one another in Christian love and follow.
Good morning once again. We are, even though we have launched into summer and our one service during the summertime, we still have lots of things going on in the life of the church, especially this month. So let me let you know about a few of those. Uh, first, you do not want to miss next Sunday. We're glad you're here this Sunday, but next Sunday is going to be exciting as well. It's one of my favorite services. That's when our youth come together and organize and lead the entire worship from beginning to end. They always do a fabulous job. We'll be hearing from our graduating seniors as they present the message, and we hope that you'll come and be a part of that as well. Related to that, this is the season of graduation. In fact, we just uh, hosted Valhalla's baccalaureate here yesterday, and I know you're either divided one side or the other. That's okay. <laughs> But it reminds us that we have a number of graduates, both from high school, community college, and college. So if you have a graduate this year, uh, if you would please let Chrissy Baker know in the church office with a phone call or an email, the name of the person, uh, where they're graduating from, their degree, we'd love to recognize them on Youth Sunday next Sunday. So please get that to us by Tuesday of this week. The United Women of Faith are undertaking one of their service projects that they do each year, and that's the putting together hygiene kits uh, to be sent to those who are in need. You see a number of items that can be donated. Uh, they're collecting them through today, and then they'll be gathering together on Wednesday, June the 5th uh, to enjoy a breakfast together, a speaker, and assembling those kits. So they'd love for you to participate either in donating uh, you can give monetary donation to help underwrite it as well and to join them at 9.30 on Wednesday morning. We do have a special charge conference coming up that is happening next Sunday as well, right after the worship service. It will be on Zoom only at 11.30 a.m. It only has one purpose, and that is to approve the salary and benefits package for your new incoming pastor, Reverend Leanne Shaw. So it shouldn't take very long, but we encourage all to participate. You'll find the sign-in in in the newsletter and join us for that quick but important meeting. Okay, there is a picture of one of our hens. (laughs) And there's a reason for that. At the Good Shepherd Ministry Center, one of our newest ministries is the Hennery. And we have, how many of these? A, A bunch. I just, yeah. They all look like that. And they're all laying eggs now. And uh, what we'd like to do is to take those eggs and make more eggs. And we'll do it in this way. Um, You can buy fresh eggs, half a dozen of them, on a Sunday morning laid by our hens here for a donation of $4. And that $4 will allow us to buy two dozen eggs from our other supplier, that we, because we provide fresh eggs every Saturday along with milk and other fresh produce for those 300 plus households who come to Good Shepherd Ministry Center on Saturday mornings. So if you like fresh eggs, buy them. Your donations will help us to create even more buying opportunities for eggs that we can distribute each and every Saturday. All righty, last but not least, we have a lot of people and friends and things to celebrate today. So we hope you'll stay following the service. I'll want you to meet the new confirmands, share in a fellowship together on the patio. We have coffee, we have lemonade, and I understand we have donuts today, so there's your incentive as well. (laughs) And it is sponsored by our trustees. All kids are staying with us today because we have so much exciting things going on in the worship service, so I'm going to ask Witness to lead us in our next song. Love for me. 
Please be seated. Today we have the honor to celebrate the sacrament of baptism and confirmation. And when I say confirmation, that means confirming our baptismal vows as we welcome our youth as the newest members of our congregation. So we're going to begin with baptism. And uh, assisting today uh, is the leader of our children, youth, and young adults who have shepherded this group through their process, Sharon Russo. Had to take a little field trip there. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. It is with great joy in my heart to present to you this morning Adelaide Beck, Ella Duval and Samantha Mayberry for baptism. Okay, Addie, Ella, Samantha, I address these questions to you. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church, and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Do you, as Christ's body of the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? Adelaide Beck. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I place upon you today the sign of the cross that marks you as a child of God, and now a member of Christ's holy church. Amen. Amen. Ella Duval, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit and place upon you the sign of cross marking you as a child of God and now a member of Christ's Holy Church. Amen. Amen. Samantha Mayberry, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Place upon you the sign of the cross that marks you as a child of God and now a member of Christ's Holy Church. Amen. You can go sit back. Okay. 
Now, friends, we move on to confirmation. And through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew our covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. On the first day of every confirmation class of each year, I ask the same question. Raise your hand if your parents are making you take this class. <laughs> and this year, for the first time ever, they all surprised me by saying no. <laughs> Each one of them had a desire to be there, a desire to learn, and a desire to grow in their faith journey. Each week, we dug deep into Jesus and love, God and grace, the Holy Spirit, and what it means to be on fire with your faith. We talked about the Bible and prayer, what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be the church. We went on field trips to explore other faiths. We were the hands and feet of Jesus with our service projects. And as we celebrated the end of our class at our retreat this weekend, I'm pretty sure that they taught me more about love and faith than I did for them. And today, they have each chosen to profess their faith and be a part of this wonderful community. We are truly blessed to get to be a part of their faith journey. Amen. Amen. It is my great honor to present to you the confirmation class of 2024. Adelaide ba Beck, <laughs> sorry, she's Addie to me. I don't know about this Adelaide. <laughs> Addie Beck. Adelaide Beck, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brooklyn Covington. Brooklyn Covington, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ella Duvall. Ella Duvall, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Samantha Mayberry.
Samantha Mayberry, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lana Robertson. Lana Robertson, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. They have just a little more work to do as we receive them now into the United Methodist Church in this congregation. So I ask you all of this. As members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. Yes. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. Amen. Thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Let us welcome our newest members. I'll take an opportunity to greet them as you uh, leave worship today. They'll be at the front door in a time during fellowship as well. We come now to the time to gather our hearts in prayer. And as we do so, we invite you, if you're with us in person, to Come forward to either of the two tables at the front to light a candle and to share your personal and private prayer with God. And we also keep in mind those in our congregation who are in need of prayer and ask for that as a community of faith. You'll notice that we have two prayer quilts this morning, and it is our practice for those who have requested those uh, quilts to pray prayers for the individuals who receive them and to tie knots in those quilts following the service to represent those prayers. First, a quilt for Dottie Bechtelmeyer, who is a former member of this congregation, moved recently, a friend of Lois Gould. She's, Dottie's been recently diagnosed with leukemia. So prayers are requested for her comfort and guidance on this journey ahead. And the other quilt is for Charlotte Dean, who is a friend of Lori and Steve Habel. Charlotte has been diagnosed with breast cancer and had surgery this week. So prayers are requested for healing and peace and for wisdom and guidance of the medical team that helps her through this time. For these and all others now, let us gather our hearts together in prayer. And first, witness will lead us into a time of centering, followed by a time of silence, our pastoral prayer, and then our Lord's Prayer.
through blessings and sorrow to the end I will follow and make this the goal of my life find me faithful ever faithful and make this the Blessings and sorrow, to the end I will follow, and make this the goal of my Creator God, we are grateful for all your good gifts. We rejoice in your creation and enjoy its many blessings. And for the opportunity to gather together as a community of faith for worship, we give you thanks. We give thanks this day for these youth who have engaged in study and service, learning about you, your son Jesus, the work of the Holy Spirit, the Bible, the church, and serving our neighbors. With them, we recommit ourselves to our baptismal vows, recommit ourselves to Christ, and to participate in the church with our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. We give thanks for the sacrament of Holy Communion, which brings us together around the Lord's table, remembering his life, death, and resurrection. We are renewed by the bread and the cup. Let this holy meal give us new life to face the challenges that await us. God, we pray for all who find themselves isolated and alone today. Whatever the circumstances, may we reach out and be in community with one another. When we see brothers and sisters in need, may we respond with hearts and hands of service. For all who are ill, struggling against disease or chronic health conditions, for all who hurt physically, mentally, and emotionally, we pray for their healing and recovery to wholeness. And we pray, O oh God, for all who grieve the loss of loved ones and ask that you give their families and loved ones comfort and grace in this time. We give thanks for your word that you shared through, uh, to, to us through the Apostle Paul that nothing, nothing can ever separate us from your love. God, may we serve as faithful witnesses to your love to share it freely. May we be part of healing a broken world with your boundless grace. And may we remember that you always walk with us in times of sorrow and joy, darkness and light. Protect us, guide us, and bless us as we now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, singing together.
reading today is from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not be with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ, who died, or rather, who was raised, who is also at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will affliction, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of those gathered together be acceptable unto you. O oh Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. There's a famous quote that is attributed to St. Francis of Assisi that you've probably heard before. Preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. And I'm going to heed that advice today and keep my remarks brief, for we are experiencing the gospel in other ways today here in worship. We took part in it and witnessed it when we baptized and confirmed these newest members of the church today. And as you heard Sharon mention, they have been engaged in study of our theology and history and organization. They experience worship here, not only at Foothills, but in other faith traditions. And they have actively engaged in service of both the church and the community. So through their baptism and confirmation of those vows, they are now part of the church universal. And we have agreed to walk with them, to support them in their journeys of faith as they travel them in the days ahead. Following this sermon, we'll have an opportunity to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Jesus shared a final meal with his disciples and instructed them to remember him every time that they broke bread together. And we continue that practice in the church to this very day. We renew the bonds that make us one in the body of Christ, renewed by the bread and the cup that represent Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. So what we're doing today in these acts and worship of baptism and Holy Communion they're all gifts. They are gifts from God of God's grace and love. And we experience God's love together as a community of faith when we remember and renew our own baptismal vows and renew our covenant with God and one another in the sharing of Holy Communion. Our scripture today adds the promise of God's love through the word. When Paul wrote his letter to the Romans, he was facing many challenges. Believe it or not, he was not a very popular person. As he traveled through the Roman Empire and was starting new churches, he had been arrested three different times for preaching the gospel, and Paul was working constantly to keep his little congregations together, from keep them from splitting up over various controversies there arose. 
And those first Christians, those early Christians in the Roman Empire, they faced their own troubles. The emperor was already persecuting them, trying to kick them out of each part of the empire, including Rome, by force. So to be a Christian in the first century was dangerous. You risked your life if you declared publicly that you were a follower of Jesus the Christ. So that's the context for those words that Paul read for us today from the letter to the Romans. That in the midst of all of these sufferings and afflictions, Paul talks about what it means to have hope. For hope we were saved, he said, Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. To have hope means to believe, to believe in something intangible, something spiritual. These first Christians, these first followers were suffering because of their choice to follow Jesus as the Messiah. And their lives were at stake as they faced persecutions on many fronts. They had to live out their faith in the secrecy of their homes. So to have hope is to believe in what we do not see, that we must have patience and faith for a better tomorrow. And then Paul Paul concludes with the words that were read today from this 8th chapter, one of my favorite scriptures. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, we may not face the same persecution as Paul and those first Christians did but there are still plenty of challenges that we face. What do we do, for example, when we receive a diagnosis of a life-threatening illness? To whom do we turn in the midst of conflict with our family or neighbor? Where do we go when we feel alone and isolated and that nobody cares for us? And maybe we even ask that question, God, if I can't even love myself, can you really love me? Those are all questions that we wrestle with, questions we ask ourselves, and we even question if God has abandoned us. We doubt, we question, we struggle. And yet, The word of God, and in particular, this word, remains our anchor. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So that when we are facing those challenges in our relationships with others, God's love upholds us. When we are battling illness or grieving the loss of a loved one to death, God's love embraces us. And when we feel that the whole world has turned against us, God's love protects us. God's love in Christ is the most powerful love of all. And here's the good news. We cannot be separated from it. That's the promise. That's the promise that has been made to us at our baptism. That even when we fall short, God never gives up on us. 
And this is the good news that we share with one another today. God loves each of us unconditionally. And that's why we're doing all of this. Each song, each vow, each prayer is a recognition and gratitude for what God has done, is doing, and will do through Jesus Christ. Share that gift with others. Let them know that they are loved and watch the transformation. Amen. Each and every time we gather, friends, we give thanks to God in a variety of ways, prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. If you wish to share a material gift to help continue to support our ministries, we are grateful for it. If you're with us in person, you can deposit your gift in the basket in the narthex as you depart, or you'll see on the screen before you a variety of ways that you can give online today or at any time. All of those are part of supporting our ministries within this church and outside the walls as we serve the community. Let us give thanks to God with grateful hearts as witness shares with us our offertory, reckless love.
tear down coming after me. Thank you, Tim, witness. Brothers and sisters, we now come to the time to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion with one another. If you're with us online at home or wherever you may be, we invite you to prepare your own form of bread and cup that you may share with us as we share the sacrament together. And for all of you, I invite you to participate and respond uh, with the liturgy on the screen before you at the appropriate time. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, where nations shall not lift up sword against nation and neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, and by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And at his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, 
in union with Christ's offering for us as we now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, in the United Methodist Church and in this congregation, the table of the Lord is open to all who wish to come and partake, so all are invited. And we'll share the sacrament in this manner. I'll invite the volunteers who are helping to serve communion to come forward first, uh, and then each and every one of you. We'll have three different stations today, one at the center for the center aisles, one on the, each of the side aisles for those of you on the sides. As you come forward, I invite you to take a piece of the bread, take your own individual communion cup, return to your pews, and then consume the elements. There are gluten-free wafers for anyone who desires those at the corner of the table as an alternative. And if you are with us at home, we invite you to share in your own form of bread and cup this morning as we share with one another. All things are now made ready. Let us come and share at the Lord's table.
For our closing prayer, I just want to offer a word of gratitude, and that is all of those who make communion possible for us. We have a number of people who help to serve each and every month or on special occasions, and we're grateful for each and every one of them. And for Jody Murray, who coordinates all of that, Jody, where'd you go? Right there. Thank you, Jody. And to my wife, Tanya, who bakes the bread for each of these gatherings. It's much better than those prepackaged things we had during COVID. <laughs> Let us pray. God, we give thanks this day with grateful hearts, grateful for your love, a love that never, ever can separate us from anything that we may face. For your love expressed through our baptism, through confirmation, and through the sharing of this sacrament, Holy Communion, we say thank you. In Christ's name, amen. Stand as you're able and let us sing together our closing song. Your hands and feet I want to be your voice 
brothers and sisters, go. Go knowing that you are loved by God. Go and share that inseparable love with all whom you meet this day and all the days to come. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Carry to the brokenhearted mercy you have shown. Send me out to the world to make you known. Sunday, y'all. We hope to see you here next week. Amen.
Nice.